Yes, ZOM 100 is back, and with a one-hour special that premiered on Christmas Day, Tendo faced down an alternative, evil version of himself. Shizuka reinvigorated her passion for life. Beatrix held true to her sense of self and pride in not only her own country, but Japan as well. And Kensho, well, he had a decent arc, I'll say, <laughs> finalizing his comedic goal. Let's dive into this inspiring finale. In episode 10, the stage is set for the final battle. Akita realized Realizes that living on a farm in the middle of nowhere isn't as bad as he thought it was, and Shizuka gets to play doctor for the villagers. I kind of forgot that she wanted to become a doctor in the first place because we took a three month break from ZOM 100, so a lot of character arcs were disjointed. However, I really enjoyed seeing this anime come back because it's just a really feel good type of show. Kensho finds a girl that cannot smile, and he instantly is able to make her laugh. It's ironic because this is an anime about people people dying violent deaths from zombie attacks, but there are so many comedic moments that just hit right. In episode 11, things pop off and the ZOM 100 gang splits up to save different people. Akita goes to find his parents and Shizuka goes to rescue the old people. That's where her risk averse personality is supposed to take over, but it really does show how much she has changed as a character when she simply draws the zombies away from the villagers at her own risk. Now, Beatrix is a different story. She fights this chainsaw wielding woman who has a disdain and hatred for other people's way of doing things, which is very interesting because everyone does things differently. Lots of times people will organize their desk in a certain way, and this crazy lady would say that it is completely wrong to do it that way. So it's obvious to say, hey, just because someone does a certain task a specific way, that does not mean that it is the only way or even the right way. However, every person should have the freedom to do as they wish, as long as it's not imposing on others, you know, like hurting them or something. Now, since I am a Christian, I believe that you should be able to do whatever you want as long as it is not a sin. And that's a heavy topic to discuss. All I will say for now is that certain sins are prevented in society by law, which is good, but other sins are just wrong, like hatred, and you can't really police that. Therefore, those are the wrong ways of doing things. But if it isn't a sin, then it's perfectly fine to do. Back to Zom, Beatrix is super cool with her samurai attire, and I must say that I can relate to her fascination with Japanese culture. She skillfully makes her escape, and she is off to utilize the water wheel to eventually take out the electrified fence. Kensho takes on a self-absorbed, depressed married guy who deserves to die by zombies, and Kensho takes the ultimate leap of faith into the not-so-clean cesspit. In typical anime fashion, Shizuka gets hunted down by a creep, and they joke about it way too casually for my taste. However, the old villagers muster their courage to attack the dude and he gets his comeuppance. In the last episode, we get more characterization from this Higurashi dude who has basically 100 bad things he wants to do before he becomes a zombie. He's basically the antithesis to Tendo. This falls into the classic anime trope where the villain isn't really that bad bad. He is just misunderstood and society has shaped him to be that way, especially because it was his own fault when he should have just reached out a little more. It's fascinating because Tendo pretends to be a zombie and gets close to Higarashi. He defeats him, saves his dad, and basically talk no jutsus Higarashi. After all of this, apparently Tendo knew that Higarashi wasn't having fun, and so he asked him what his real list had on it. The dude just wanted to swim, apparently. Now, is this an over used cliche in anime, sure, but ZOM 100 is pretty simple in its thesis statement. Do what you want and follow your dreams as long as you don't hurt others. Is that an iffy theological statement? Sure, but that's a different debate for another time. I think ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead does a good job of pointing out the flaws in these villains logic and ideology, and so I really just love this anime. The finale was exciting, joyous, and left me feeling pretty good overall. I even teared up when old man Hiko gave the speech to the old people about saving Shizuka. I really appreciated the inspirational motivation and simple but pretty solid ideological debate. So Tendo saves the day and Higarashi turns into a zombie with the rest of his gang. This means that the village is safe once again and they start to rebuild with new hopes and dreams. A montage is shown at the end where new people are coming next season as well as updates on the people we have seen this season. ZOM 100 Bucket 
list of the dead was a surprisingly fun anime. Gigguk was right when he reviewed this manga all the way back so long ago. And I think it's safe to say that this show doesn't break any molds. However, it is such a relief from the uninspired and repetitive anime that we usually get each season. Crunchyroll and Netflix did a great job marketing the show, and I absolutely love all of the four main characters. They are so unique with different personalities that you would not think could come together and make something so beautiful and funny. But somehow, this show puts a smile on my face every time I see Tendo get excited about a new item on his bucket list. It may not be the best anime of the decade, or even the best anime of this year, but ZOM 100 Bucket List of the Dead delivers an exciting and fun story that we rarely get to see in anime.